and then you're just able to select what kind of performance you want. Do you want it to go with kick and snare, or do you want to kick and slap on the snare, or do you just want to have power hand, which would be on the downbeats, I guess. Let's take a look at uh, taking our MIDI groove from Easy Drummer, and I'll just drag it over here. So I've got kick for downbeats, slap for snare. Hi, I'm Don Baudin from SimpleLibraryReview.com, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new Easy Bass from ToonTrack. ToonTrack's well known for their Easy Drummer drumline, Easy Keys, Superior Drummer, and now they've ventured in to fill out the rhythm section with a bass instrument. Now in today's video, we're going to get a pretty good feel for what Easy Bass has to offer quite a few of the tones and whatnot. I'm going to start the video by playing a mock-up I did using Easy Bass. Then we'll go over facts about the instrument. Uh, we'll have a preset playthrough where I both go through both the Easy Bass Modern and Easy Bass Vintage presets. We'll play around a little bit with the different um, built-in groove, grid editor, drum and keys functionality and the audio tracker get to get a feel for that and then I'll share the entire process of coming up with that bass groove and performance using all of those different features together for the track that I demoed and mocked up and at the very end we'll do a little wrap up of what I think about the instrument and who I think this is for. Bass downloads is 2.7 gigabytes. It's a bass guitar plugin. It has a two sample sets of very different but diverse bass instruments. Modern bass, which is sampled from an Almec bass known for being dynamic, expressive, and a full range of frequencies. It's best known for use with Metallica's former bassist Jason Newstead, jazz player Stanley Clark, Grateful Dead bassist Phil Lesh plays one, classic rock bassist John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin also plays one. The library also comes with a vintage sample set from a Fender jazz bass. This is another very different but diverse sounding bass guitar played by Progressive Rock's Rush Getty Lee, alternative rock group Red Hot Chili Peppers Flea, the famous jazz bassist Jaco Pastorius, Noel Redding of Jimi Hendrix, Larry Graham of Sly and the Family Stone, and Adam Clayton from U2. The library comes with fingered and picked presets with articulations including auto alternating fingers, picks, percussive tapping, slaps, pops, ghost slaps, and harmonics. In addition to being a playable instrument, the plugin includes features for creating complete songs within the plugin with their songwriter, generating and modifying with MIDI grooves, play and edit in the plugin with internal MIDI editor, and convert audio from other instruments into bass lines with the audio tracker. Easy Bass normally sells for 179 US dollars. I want to have a big thank you to TimeSpace for getting me an advance copy to check out so I could deliver this video for you guys on the day it launches. I'll include links to take you straight over to the TimeSpace ToonTracks Easy Bass page. Now 
look at the size of the GUI, I do want to note here that it's pretty big the way it loads up and you are able to stretch it and make it smaller. It does constrain to a pretty big size with that, but you are able to go in and scale it even smaller by going into this help menu. And you've got a couple different sizing proportions. So you can see that whole base, and that takes up my entire screen. Now, before we jump into listening to the presets here, I also want to note that as you go along, each of the effects for the presets you can access right here with an effects. And you'll see we get different effects depending on which preset we're listening to. So if you want access to something distorted, you need to go to something that says distorted. And you'll see that the distortion effects come into play there. Modern bass here. And we've got a, a few different um, presets for each. That's the clean DI. So you can hear some sliding. Nice response on the keyboard. This is the clean DI. Let's go to uh, clear, clean dynamics. Check this out. Now we've got some with an amp setting. Bright and deep. Now I need to As you can see, we've got a five string bass for the modern, goes down to low C. Hammer ons, pull offs, all responding really nicely. Distorted metal. To it. Here's effects. the Funk King Funk Octaves. The 
like the uh, automatic interpretations of finger noise and slides. It's not overbearing. It seems natural. So it's a multi effects. reflection now these have all been fingered um, bass samples and effects change let's go to some of the picked here's the clean dynamic picked definitely a lot more attack there Distorted metal picked. Yeah, a lot of lot of tone in that. Yeah. Legend 810. Low B, I had said goes down to low C, but I was incorrect. It goes down to low B. I was on the first fret before. And 
nasty metal pick. Okay, those are the modern bass presets that it comes with. Now we've got a collection of um, fingered and picked vintage bass. Start with the clean DI. And now a combo. Line EQ. Yeah, it's better. It's got a little bite to it. Yeah, I like when you hit that high velocity, you get that ringing out. Very natural, hearing that string ring against your frets. Scoop sound. It's a pretty uh, vintagey sound there with that pure analog one. I like that seventies rock amp. These are just the fingered. We're moving on now to the picked. Here's the clean DI pick. actually, isn't it? And it's probably up the octave. And that's probably a little more appropriate with that uh, sound there for that kind of jazz line. up high oh, with my double stops sometimes I'm getting away with it oh 
other times I'm not. And I think that's something about, if I play these two notes, I can get to the double stop. If I play these two, I don't. If I play those two, I do. So it's a little odd. analog with pick. Seventies rock amp. Comment below if you can. Maybe I'll find some sample libraries to send you. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's a nice vintage kind of sound. Orm vintage pick. Right. Overall preset sound, um, really clean and clear, nice diverse range. Uh, I think that the two different sample sets, modern and vintage, seem to give a nice um, amount of depth, especially for the first of the library. Because as I bet you're thinking, ToonTrack is going to probably be releasing more easy bass expansions if you are on that uh, on either of the easy keys or easy drummer you know all about those expansions so I look forward to more of these alright so now let's check out some of the way that easy bass functionality works here there's the groove generator which will let you pick from a selection of verses Choruses. Pre programmed in through the MIDI. There's also uh, a variation of genres. these here also got the ability to eliminate your tags and just tap by find by tap so I could think boom there we go I 
find similar grooves to what I just plugged in with the step sequencer or tapping. I find it easier to use the step sequencer, the tapping. Um, for some reason, it doesn't quite, it's not as quick to grab what I'm looking for. So after we've selected one that we liked, we're able to either drag it into our DAW via MIDI, or we can um, drag it into our track here. I'm going to go ahead and just put it here at uh, 44. Let's go. Actually, let's just do 50, because I'm pretty sure I don't have anything playing there. And then I'll be able to just loop it, and we can take a look at it here. Here we go. Here we could work within the uh, instrument for MIDI and edit our notes and groove there. You can see it's got our chords here, or we can actually go into this area and edit chords. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up just for something simple, um, like an A. Let's see what happens once I've changed my, my chords. It's just automatically changing my MIDI. The same performance, the same rhythm, but with a different, uh, different chord structure underlying. Also found that uh, was really nice is they've added this transitions for the bass. So I'll just play at 51 into bar 50, 50, 50 into 51. So right now it's got this uh, little stop here. I'm going to go ahead and extend it. I'm going to select these two and add a transition between 51 and 52. Make it a long slide. There we go. Now let's check it out. So I think it only affects what it only affects the end of what your you've highlighted. I selected both of them, thinking it was a transition, but it looks like it works this way. So then we'd able be able to go in, select this, and get rid of that transition. So that's just a little idea of an overview of finding grooves, pre-MIDI grooves that are built into the instrument, uh, editing them in the grid editor within the instrument again. Uh, and then the next thing is something I'm pretty excited about, uh, and that's the drums to keys. Before we get into that drums to keys, which drums and keys, let's... Um, Let's have a comment here. Uh, one thing that I do love about the instrument, you're able to just click on your MIDI region in the instrument and hit delete. Now, what's really confusing is you cannot do that in Easy Drummer uh, 2 or with Easy Keys. You actually have to, uh, if you have a MIDI file in your sequence, you have to actually click. Uh, I use Control and then remove it. If you hit delete, whatever your DAW has selected is going to delete that. And I delete stuff all the time. So I can't wait for them to update Easy Drummer to and Easy Keys so that you're able to work with the instrument and actually just hit the delete key. Um, so I'm looking forward to upgrades on those instruments to match Easy Drum, Easy Bass. 
Moving on to drums and keys. Now, this is one of the neater, more powerful uh, ish performance is that the plugin can provide. Now, you're able to take a groove. And then you're just able to select what kind of performance you want. Do you want it to go with kick and snare? Do you want it to be uh, like this? Uh, or do you want to kick and slap on the snare? Or do you just want to have the power hand, which would be on the downbeats, I guess. Let's take a look at uh, taking our MIDI groove from Easy Drummer. And I'll just drag it over here. So I've got kick for downbeats, slap for snare. Again, now that we've got that groove, I'm able to just drag it in here to 50 if I want. I'll put this one on 50 as well. And now I can just play this one bar, to, this one bar phrase. And now I can go in, I can edit it here. So I could, I'm hoping that you could see with me just fooling around that, that we're able to easily get grooves generated from all of any of the Easy Drum MIDI packs and libraries, as well as Easy Keys. And that's why it's called Drums and Keys. And they work seamlessly between each other. Um, unfortunately, you're not able to drag MIDI from your DAW right into the easy bass drums and keys which was the way i was hoping to work with it um and maybe that's a, a plug-in or software limitation but i just want to mention that's one of the things that i saw happening while i was working with the instrument the other thing i'm going to get her to try out here is the audio tracker and what this is promising is that you're able to draw drag audio and convert it to midi so that your monophonic bass line you perform on any guitar uh, will now be able to play um, the bass line. So let's go ahead and delete what we have here. And I'm going to go over to a pre-made electric guitar line that I created. It's electric audio to bass. I'm dragging it in. And it's going to use the guitar audio to bass MIDI file and it's converting it 100 BPMs, which is what I used. And I'm going to go ahead and let it use additional articulations for each of these. And now, let's see what it did. I'm hearing um, I'm hearing some missed notes, and I'm also hearing a mix between the two. So I've got the blend ratio right here at the top between the audio sample and the bass. You can hear I did it in two octaves to see how it would hold up. And I'm hoping that we would be able to just go over to our grid view editor. Nope. Um, we have to, uh, all right, I've been able to save it as user MIDI. So we'll come over here. We've got user MIDI here. We'll import this in. And 
And now you can see it's auto detecting the key. And, and you can see it right, missed the notes right here, right away. There we go. Let's see what that does. And here we're able to change our Yeah, you really would need to clean it up a lot. And here we're, we're able to go in and do our control click to remove instead of having to uh, hit the delete button. If you hit the delete button, I'm afraid of what it might delete. So let's actually um, let's hit delete and find out what happens. Oh, it deletes it too. Okay. So you got two options once you're editing inside the MIDI window. So overall, very quickly, what I'm seeing here is... Uh, that we've got controls for zoom with option and scrolling with your mouse and we could zoom in here we go with shift option which is very handy overall playback what uh, it's intuitively doing kind of what I was hoping for once I've gone in and cleaned up the MIDI um, I'm gonna go out on a limb from my few seconds here and say that audio tracker probably works really great with percussive and then you're probably able to go in and adapt those to notes although I'm not hearing it catch uh, as much of the instrument's note playback as possible. Maybe I needed to do something like this, where we're actually turning our thresh threshold way up. So even turning it up, it's still not quite a clean audio to MIDI translation. Um, but I think that with time, uh, maybe they'll continue to develop this out a little bit more. Always am hoping one day somebody will have great audio tracking. Now there is another way that you're able to record audio in, and I have not figured out how that is because it's asking us to select our input, and it says we need the TuneTrack Audio Sender plugin to the track we wish to record. Um, it did not install with the TuneTrack Audio Sender, so I'm going to need to do some research and find out where that is, or maybe it's just not available because this uh, review of Easy Bass is actually happening before the instrument is going live. So I'll be very eager to check out the TuneTrack Audio Sender plugin once that is available. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through a song that I'm working up, program it in, and I'll have shared that at the beginning. So the first thing I'm doing here is just getting my basic chord structured in. I'm just doing that by dragging in and placing different chords for the chord changes inside the instrument's uh, 
songwriting plugin. And I missed a chord there. There we go. drag and copy the ones I want to use and clean up the end. Then we're going to go ahead and drag the uh, drum pattern over to the drum section, the input for keys and drums and generate a new bass groove based on there we go, that one's pretty good. But I'm seeing that uh, because I only drug in one bar from the Easy Drummer's songwriting function, that it's only giving me one bar to place in my Easy Bass songwriting timeline. So I'd have to Mix those and change the chords, of course. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, so I can just copy, drag. I think it's a Option click to drag, everything copies over. And then back to my verse, so I'll just copy my verse. And I know the rest of the song repeats those sections. So for the sake of uh, Working as quickly as possible, I'm just copying this throughout and listening to make sure I don't have any chords changes that I missed. And I had an extra, didn't need that. And I think uh, I'd like to try to utilize the uh, grooves that are included. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out the tagging. And let's see if we can find a nice kind of soul groove. A little too busy. So I'm just listening for rhythm here because I'm going to be selecting one. Ooh, that's kind of neat because it's got the little slide there. So now I'm just replacing the mini note performance, not the chord changes. Uh, that's pretty good. And I see I messed up my song form. Oh, Seinfeld in the house, that's way too busy. That's neat. 
slide up front. And now I want to just be able to resize that so that I'm able to copy and paste my form there. Now we're going to go ahead and dig into the uh, grid view because this is where we're going to be able to just make the little changes that will make it fit the song perfectly. Now I need something for this uh, pre-chorus with a little bit more uh, it's got a little bounce to it. And just check my notes, make sure they're going to work with the performance. And just duplicate what I've done there. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the finished piece with a focus on the bass. And the bass is turned up nice and loud. I'm going to go ahead and change up my bass to do one of the vintage uh, 70s. Vintage warm, I believe, is the one I want. So let's go ahead and check it out this way. really pleased with this. I think that uh, even though I'm seeing a few things that I would be a little critical about overall with the instrument, not uh, quite understanding what this um, 
best case for importing audio to get monophonic bass lines out of. Uh, I think that will take some experimenting. I also feel like this uh, record audio where you need to select the TuneTrack Audio Center plugin, um, maybe that's coming and I just don't know about it. Didn't see it in the literature and I didn't see it when I did a Google search. Um, groove editing is just as simple as it is on any of the other TuneTrack's instruments with the addition of uh, the mix and match chords, rhythms, and grooves, as well as the programming and the grid editor. I'm really pleased with this. So I think it's going to take a little experimenting, but I'm starting to see how instantly getting uh, some of these bass playing grooves down, and I love the way they've built it, so you've got your keys separate, then your grooves. So once you get your key, um, chord changes set up, you can just drag in your grooves and adjust them on the fly. Overall, I have to say, I'm really pleased with what they've put out here. Easy Bass is super easy to use, and even with version 1.0, uh, I'm finding that really work smoothly and seamlessly for songwriters, anybody looking to have some more thought out, intelligent bass playing. If you're the kind of person who doesn't know much about bass and don't play bass, then the difference between playing some roots and fifths along to your track and having some well thought out movement in the bass line can make a huge difference in the details of the production. I think that Easy Bass delivers very strongly with the different ways you're able to control, generate, and manipulate different bass lines to fit your tracks. I'm really pleased with what they've done here, and I think I'm going to continue to work with Easy Bass on this project I'm working on, because I'm liking the results. Sounds-wise, overall, the uh, two different bases you get are really nice, and I think we all know, if you're a Tune Tracks fan, that we're going to probably be seeing Easy Bass expansions with more sample sets in the future, specific uh, different styles of basses, different models of basses should be really nice to continue to expand on these, just as many of us have expanded on our Easy Drums lines and Easy Keys lines. Now, I think this is going to be extremely useful for songwriters um, and for producers who want to dig in and tweak bass lines for strong songs or song structured music if you're creating tracks for library tracks in rocks, rock, jazz, uh, styles, pop styles. I think this is going to be pretty helpful as well um, to get those movements in the baseline that you otherwise might think of, might not think of, and to be able to quickly generate a baseline to get a demo together will also be a huge benefit. As smoothly as this worked in my system, no glitches, no pops, I'm really pleased that TuneTrax is releasing this with uh, such well done beta testing, I should say. Uh, you heard my criticisms throughout, and they're all things I think I could work around or learn to adapt with until possibly the developer either updates or releases something. But for a version one of the instrument, I'm really pleased with this. Thanks so much for taking a little time to check out the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts about Easy Play Bass. Please comment below. Tell me thinking this is something you could pick up how would you be using easy bass in your tracks love to hear your thoughts please like share and subscribe always love your support and be sure to head over to samplelibrarywreview.com for the latest news reviews and our weekly deals page